All right, second ingredient. It's called transference. This is all about the employee's past experiences with authority. You have nothing to do with this. This is nothing about you. This is all about them. They come to work, and they get a boss, and they transpose right onto you this lens that they're looking through. They don't know they're looking through a lens, but that lens is made up of all their past experiences with authority. And where's the primary source of that? Where did, where did they get the most of their lens? It's their parents. It's their parents. Think about this. This is years. This is the formative, brain-growing years where they're learning all sorts of things about authority. And they don't even know they're learning things about authority, but that's what's happening there. And you inherit this. Right? So they learned a lot about authority from their parents. Now, to a lesser degree, where else did they learn about authority? Schools. That's probably the next one. Teachers and principals. Where else? Sports coaches. Is that good? Sports coaches. Yes. Coaches. It's a huge one for some people, right? Scout leaders. Religious leaders. Other bosses. Right? You have, you have a wide variety of sources of this lens. And this is subconscious. You don't know you're doing this for, for the most part. But you've created your own story. And without even knowing we're doing it, we put that right on the person now who is our current authority figure. So, so this is the um, client who had an experience with a boss. That this, this person was a micromanager. He was shaming. He took advantage of him several different times when it came to time and hours and stuff. Um, there was times where he, at the last minute, canceled his vacation. Um, uh, made him work weekends, uh, destroyed in some ways his, his work-life balance, right? This is a guy who works for this person for years and years and years, and now he comes to work for you. And you're a pretty decent boss. And three months into it, you need him to work a Saturday. Might she get a bad reaction? You might not see it. You might see it, you might not, but at least it might, it's there, right? So I just want to remind you that this is a really... Um, important part of this of the makeup of this power differential now we're going to dig into this a little bit um, a little kind of a side note here but I, but it's super relevant we went through we're going through these four stages of dependency this is kind of where the transference comes from um, human beings go through these four stages of dependency we call the first stage dependence which is this child phase this is the the years where you literally literally are dependent like like you would die without this other person. It's actual dependence. Now, would it surprise you to know that not every adult has completely worked through this phase? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean to villainize anyone because I'm going to actually be a little more pointed on this. Actually, none of us have completely worked through these first two stages. There, to, to varying degrees, we're all going to struggle, and we probably don't even know it but we're struggling with various parts of these first two stages. So, if you have an employee who's really kind of stuck in this phase, or maybe not stuck, but they're struggling with this phase, what kind of behaviors might you see in that employee? What, what are dependent behaviors in an adult employee? Yeah, one of the things you'll see most often in this person is it's really hard for them to not check with you about everything before they make a decision, before they move forward. Now often, if this is a dependent thing, What's going on for them could very well be this. Um, fear, it's always fear, by the way. Fear of uh, getting in trouble. Fear, another pretty common one is fear of being wrong. And sometimes those are really linked. Okay. What else? Other behaviors you might see from a dependent? Trouble with time management. Yeah, good. T trouble with just responsibility in general, but time management would be an example of that. What else? Acting out. Or yeah. Kind of yeah. Uh, well, I like to call it tantrums, but <laughs> right, the adult version, right, which is just a way of saying um, difficult controlling their own emotions. They kind of leak out on people, right? 
All right, next phase kids go into. It's always fun to parent these guys. <laughs> Counterdependence. It's the teen years. Now, this is the time where it's actually really important that teens begin to say these three things. There's these three messages that they actually have to start feel, uh, experiencing. And again, there's, there's, there's brain development aspects of this where they really do need to start saying these three things. Number one, I'm not as like you as I used to be. Right? That's called differentiation. Okay? Number two, um, I'm not, uh, you're not the boss of me as much as you used to be, right? Right? You're not the boss of me as much as you need to. So, um, so I'm not like you as much. You're not the boss of me. And there's also this sort of aspect of I don't need you as much as I used to be. As much as I used to be, right? Now, can we all agree that for parents, all of those can be a little bit painful? Who, who's been there? Meaning, who has had teenagers? A couple of you? Three or four or five of you? Um, how many of you have been teenagers? How many of you? Most of you? Most of you? Okay. I skipped that. You skipped that phase. You're, you're getting to that next week, right? You'll start right. All right. Um, so, so what kind of behaviors might you see in this adult who's still struggling through? Um, Rebellion. Yeah, you might see a lot more pushback, push right? I know. Say again. I know. I already know. Yeah. I already know. Difficulty getting tests done. Difficulty getting things done, and you're going to see more blame. And you're going to get, this is where you're going to get that you're not the boss of me vibe. Mm -hmm. And you're going to think to yourself, well, that's weird. Last time I checked the org chart, <laughs> I was the boss of you. <laughs> Good. All right. Um, I just want to do a side note to my side note to my side note. I think this is three layers deep now. On this teenage one, um, I, I didn't mention this earlier this morning, but uh, my first career was social work. Um, I spent a lot of time with families. Um, and by the way, the transition from working with families to working with organizations was relatively seamless. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but we used to get really concerned about those families that didn't allow their kids to go through counterdependence. There's a couple subcultures in our world that kind of villainize all those messages. I don't need you as much. I'm not like you as much. You're not the boss of me, right? Um, there's cultures that, that call that bad. And they, they do everything they can to tamp down on that and not allow it. And it's, it's frightening when we see that. Because back in my social work days, um, now here, here's this kid who is supposed to, you know, who's developmentally going through these phases. And they need to differentiate. They need to go through counterdependence. They're not being allowed to. Well, let me give you a little test question on this. What's, just make up what, something on this. What's the cost, let's say, to a 14-year-old who's disrespectful to his parents. Just make up a cost. What, what might be a cost? Grounding. A grounding, an allowance issue, lose your phone. phone. Everybody says phone, I use your phone. Back in my day, that Video. meant nothing, but, right. Yeah, okay, but what's the cost to a 26-year-old who is uh, against authority and rebellious and can't handle authority? Unemployment. Unemployment, right, jail. Here's the, here's the key, guys. The cost of counterdependence gets higher the older you get. Right? You kind of want your kids to go through it when they're supposed to go through it. Because they're going to go through it, I promise. <laughs> right? I'd rather have them go through it at home where it's safe than go through it when they're in their 20s or 30s. Right? Now, again, an adult who's struggling with counterdependence, you're going to see some of those behaviors here in the workplace. Now, in saying that, as we gave these two examples, again, I'm not vilifying these folks. Right? Here's the theory. Everyone in this room, to varying degrees, is still working through some of that stuff. And, and if you think that's not true, just spend some time with it, right? Because there's, there's probably parts of you that you'll recognize that are not quite done working through those two phases. And I want you to understand that this is what's happening when you see some of these behaviors in your employees. Now, next, we all get to independence. By all, I mean at least everybody in this room. I know you're all in this phase, and how do I know that? Right, because you're here. Because you're here, right? You're, I'm assuming you're not on a day pass, right? <laughs> you actually work here, right? Um, your mom wasn't outside with your lunch waiting for you. And if she was, don't tell me. That's okay. Not, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that, right? Um, you're not in your parents' basement right now playing video games, right? Maybe tonight, but not right now. <laughs> all right, so in any event, I know you're in this phase. And I also know that we all get to spend some time in this really cool phase. When we grow to the point where we don't give up independence... This is not like we're leaving this one, but we're adding this one. Not only am I able to be independent, I also understand that it's in community that I grow, that I, that I thrive in relationships. 
Here's what I want for myself, for you and for all my employees. I want us toggling back and forth between these. I want my own kids to be doing this, right? Toggling back and forth. And yet, we've all left parts of ourselves up here. So there's transference, right? Now the first two ingredients of the power differential, the power you have over the employees, right? And this one, transference. You really can't control either of those, right? You can't control those. That, those are both what they are. Now, I, I take that back a tiny bit. On the first one, you can practice giving autonomy. There's some small things you can do, but regardless, they know you're their boss. <laughs> That's not a secret. They get it, and they get it on a visceral level as well.